Welcome to another video on Brandwise where we talk about business and finance. In this video, I want to talk about how I invested my 2,209 euros in what kind of different stocks and what were like, you know, my criteria behind them. In the hope that maybe you also get inspired by it and like take your finances a bit more seriously and see like where you can start investing. So this video is of course in no shape or form any kind of buying advice. You should always do your due diligence before like, you know, thinking about buying something. And with that, let's jump into the video. So I bought my first four stocks because previously I was only investing in ETFs and ETFs have very low risk. The volatility is very less because you are like kind of diversified across like so many different kind of like, you know, companies or like stocks. But now when you buy some kind of stocks, like you are very like, you know, individually dependent on the performance of one company and not of the entire market. So this is the trade off there. But the positive side of buying a stock is that you don't have any kind of total expense ratios that you have to think about. In ETFs, you always have still some kind of fee. You have like 0.1 to 0.5% which is still a lot lower than mutual funds. In mutual funds, you have two to three percent of management fee like every single year, but in ETFs, it's lesser. In stocks, it's negligible, right? Like the only money that you're paying is in the starting when you're like buying something, you know, so like you have your broker commission. So in Trade Republic, it's one euro. On Comdirect, it's three euros, 90 cents. That's the first cost. And then there could be a cost of the spread. So like it depends on like how much actual price of the stock is and how much you will be like able to execute it for. Think of it almost like a delivery cost like you want to buy something but to buy that thing like there's again like some kind of additional cut that the stock exchanges take but these are all the numbers that you can see right away before you are like you know executing any kind of order the first ever stock that i've purchased in my life then turns out to be johnson and johnson the company is really diversified it has a really good reputation for a long time like less debts good profits and then afterwards also the dividend yield is not so bad so again the dividends is like 95 dollars in a year you have your dividend yield of 2.75 percent the price by earnings ratio of 24.52 so price per earning share is pretty much what price you are paying for the stock and it is divided by what is the earning per share, right? So like if now again, like there are like a lot of different kind of like valuations here, but if you read the book, The Smart Investor, like they have a criteria about the PE ratio where like if a stock is having a PE ratio of less than 10, then it is underpriced and it's nice because like you can buy something like underpriced and then afterwards when it is coming to its like decent value then you're able to sell the stocks and make a profit right so like that's nice there a lot of like tourism and airline companies are coming in this category right now because of the entire like crisis that is going on so you know people have been like panic selling and there has been a lot of like crazy stuff happening so like this is the reason you will see like the cruises and the airlines and the other tourism industry coming down heavily. Many of them you can still find underpriced at the moment. So that is interesting. Then afterwards you have less than 15, which is going to be like fairly priced. Then you have more than 20, which is overpriced and then more than 30 is an extreme bubble. And this is the case when you are expecting some company to grow in a massive way or, you know, like it is a lot based on the future speculations of how the company is going to perform. So some of them are like Amazon, it's like 87.55. PE, they show Visa, um, like, you know, your, your debit cards, like they have like 32.13, MasterCard 33.18, Procter & Gamble 67.01. And if you would see like here, the stocks that I've purchased, like they're all like below like 25 and you know, like in the range of like 20 till like absolute four. This was like still nice because it is really important when you're buying something, like if you're buying the stocks in a company for a very like expensive price, then you're not really getting a good return on that money, right? But if you're like able to buy something at a sale almost and like it's underpriced, and of course, it's nice. The first one was Johnson & Johnson. Like you could also take Procter & Gamble. Uh, but yeah, like I left it because of the PE ratio. And then there are also like a lot of other kind of alternatives. You can like always take a look. It's like also dependent on uh, the personal preference, right? Johnson & Johnson has been doing well for a long time and it's a well-established brand. I don't think it is going to go anywhere in the near future. So this is what I chose. Then afterwards, American Express. I'm a really happy customer of American Express. I've been using the credit card, American Express payback credit card for a long time because like it helps you save a lot of money on groceries, right? Like as long as you're paying your credit card bills on time, you are not going to be charged any kind of fee. And this is the thing that like people just don't understand. They think like as soon as they get a credit card, they will just fall into like massive debts and they're going to be like charges here and there that's absolutely not the case at all as long as you're paying for the things that you can afford like you have the money to pay for it and then you're just paying with the credit card you can get rewards on it 
and like in the end you essentially like you know end up getting money back when i had issues i just contacted the customer support the customer support was the friendliest of like you know all of the different kind of credit card companies that i've like contacted or like even just like normal businesses this is also what like really like you know puts amex apart like uh, just a nice customer service and the kind of support they have for their customers which is like really nice if you take a look at visa and mastercard like it never happens that Visa or MasterCard is producing their own cards, you know, because like it's always like either by SBI or like let's say in the Gibeon Fry, it's from uh, Advancia. If, if you take a look at the Genial card, it's from Visa, uh, Hanseatic Bank. So like it's always given by somebody else. But in American Express, it's almost like Apple. They are the people who are taking care of the payment. Uh, they're also like the people who are like handling everything in the back end and like they're just like very integrated in this system whereas visa and mastercard they're more like androids of the entire online payment or the cashless transaction you know ecosystem so this is why i was uh, really like you know uh, happy about american express because first of all like i'm able to like invest in the company which i really love and then afterwards um, the dividend yield is well all right not so nice but like the pe ratio right now it's really good most of these stocks have been performing really well in the last few years but just because of this crisis all of the stocks kind of came on sale so like this is also a criteria which i was taking a look at like if the company had been performing well for such a long time and just all of the sell-offs just happened because of the crisis well then it's a nice time to buy like if it was performing anyways previously good too then i bought carnival now again um, carnival is a relatively new name not a lot of people knew about it but it is a cruise company and it has a lot of different kind of uh, vessels and stuff and like you know just holds cruises here and there were performing well again but like because there are no cruises going around whatsoever the stock prices like they declined heavily that was a bad uh, news for them but then uh, there was an investment from saudi which kind of shot up the price of this entire you know stock and mainly because like every single time Warren Buffett or like the Saudis like they invest in something like the stock prices start shooting up and market is emotional you know like they see like maybe like they see a lot of like potential in this company and now they have the money to back their operations so maybe it is going to do well afterwards carnival was previously trading at 40 50 now and like i bought it at 10 so like maybe if even if it gets a 30 or something i can sell it and like you know get the stocks somewhere else like i'm not so attached to this company um i just bought it because like it was really cheap and uh, it is going to grow back again and then it's a nice opportunity of making profit because even if like I have 50 shares now and like it becomes like four times in its value, then you have 1500 euros that you can make on the side. So that is something that I had in mind. Coca-Cola again, like something that is backed by Warren Buffett and has been, you know, in the business for a long time. So uh, PE ratio is again 22.5. So this is like kind of overpriced uh, with Carnival Cruise. Like it was very, very cheap. It was underpriced. So that was like definitely um, something that I was interested in. Uh, with coca-cola it's nice like you know and like you have the dividends coming in which is also like nice so dividends i think like i'm still planning of maxing out the 801 euro limit you know that the german government gives you that you are able to earn 801 euros uh, in profits from stocks every single year so like if you have like additional 801 euros that's not bad at all Right, so I, I'm planning on doing that, but my savings plan, which is the MSCI world and the emerging markets, I'm keeping them as normal. So like this, whatever like investment I did in the stocks, this was from the extra money that I saved up because I also wanted to try this out just because now stocks don't have any kind of additional ongoing fees involved with it. Right, so like this is the reason I wanted to like take a look at it. Now, if you take a look at the industries, this is pharmaceutical, this is, you know, finance and like, you know, banking insurance. Then you have your carnival which is tourism and then coca-cola which is again your food industry all right so like now this is again some kind of diversification it is not ideal like to be very well diversified you should be taking a look at at least like you know 10 to 30 companies but like again it's a starting you always have to start somewhere right like i'm still like keeping the savings plan as my retirement because you know like they are giving you a lot better return because they're accumulating they're not putting out dividends every single um, quarter or like every single month whatever the dividend plan is like all of the dividends 
all of the dividends are invested right back so like you have a very nice compounding effect there whereas here like when you're getting the dividends out there's always some kind of fall in the stock price which is like you know not so nice but again the price of the stock is increasing and then dividend is just some kind of additional benefit that you're having so again for some people it's interesting for others it's not it just really depends it's like all about the personal preference uh, i like to keep it this way and i'm also going to share further like you know how things proceed all right guys thanks a lot for watching this video if you want to start investing you can take a look at trade republic it's a really nice brokerage but otherwise if you don't have you know a permanent residency in eu or like if you're not from some selected uh, eu countries then the next best option is going to be comdirect because like there you can very easily start a depot and you can start investing right away for trade republic you click on yes depot ifnin right and then you can like create an account uh, put your telephone number inside then you put your personal data and then the identification happens the identification then happens afterwards on app right so this is a story this is the story for most of the eu nationals but you have to like register first online then if you want to open a depot at comdirect you just click on yes depot ifnin then afterwards you click here if you're having like trouble understanding maybe like your german is not that nice then you can also like go use google translate right away so here you just have to fill out your personal details really simple like mr miss and then afterwards if you have a title and then the first name surname and then if you had any kind of like you know birth name then your date of birth then where you were born the city now nah, and like your nationality and then you go further then afterwards you will receive a confirmation and then you have to do an identity check so that generally happens via video ident so that also happens online otherwise for some nationalities whose passports are not accepted they have to do a post ident so they will have to go to the normal post office and just like you know get their identity checked and that's pretty much it it's like really simple opening the depots are at least the first step in getting smarter with your finances because in the longer run it really does matter when do you start how soon do you start and how long are you actually you know investing now it could be like with really small amounts like i said 25 euros are just completely fine and that's how you should start but then afterwards once you get more comfortable you can you know use like bigger amounts whatever you feel like it is a lot more important to like at least start with like less amounts i also like just started i think with like 100 euros or 200 euros i don't remember right now but again like these are the money that you always build up like you can start with 25 euros per month savings plan but like you're starting early this means like you are having the benefit of compound interest for a longer time than somebody who is like you know going to wait till he has a few hundred euros and then start investing so really think about it thanks a lot for watching this video i'll see you in the next one